lined up for the meetup. We should uh, get an update. Probably do maybe uh, last week of June uh, this year to avoid the July 4th holiday probably next time. Um, anyway, uh, my name is David. I work here at Geekdom. I'd like to thank Geekdom uh, for always providing the uh, meeting space here. If anyone's looking for a co-working space, it's pretty cool. Uh, desks out here uh, start at 300 bucks a month. And I'd also like to thank Radius for sponsoring the event tonight. Thank so, you. Uh, yeah. Camera. All right, camera. <laughs> So anyway, uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce uh, John Hurley, who's the head of product for Radius, which is a very cool looking uh, analytics product. Cool. Thanks, David. Thanks, thanks you, for uh, Thanks for having us. Yeah. we got videos everywhere. This is um, scary. Oh, there's a lot. You, you have your own video? No, I mean, that one, this one, it's pretty nerve-wracking. Oh, <laughs> it's okay. Right, well, in order to... to you know, yeah. crack the nerves a little bit. I have an icebreaker. This was the part where I, I told a few people there's a little nudity in my, so don't be offended. But Who's I that? always start internal meetings with icebreakers. And then I started doing this on some webinars and then quickly realized, oh yeah, like everyone's muted on webinars. So you don't get any feedback, so it's just really awkward. Um, Do you so want feedback today? Not today. Not today. No awkwardness today. So... Um, tell me, and it can't be Salesforce, so all the Salesforce people out there, this is a tough question because a lot of times enterprise software companies get a bad rap for, for not having very exciting brands. But in your opinion, what is the most badass enterprise software brand from a marketing perspective? Who has like the best brand out there? Like you'd say Nike if it was consumer, maybe. Well, Salesforce. I said no sales for us. Oh, yeah. Oh, we can tell you it's not. It's an easier question. Okay. Who's that? Trade Trade not CA technologies. Okay. Maybe at the bottom, I think. Yeah, that's pretty good. IBM tries to buy clues, but they're not cool. Yeah. It's like we talk about so many things that are so big and aspirational that no one can do it. So that's why we talk about it. Well, this is a lot of Salesforce applications that are pretty good. What do you got? You got one. I mean, I would say. Who do you aspire? Aspire to be? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I like Apple, but they're. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. they're kind of also consumer as well. Yeah. It's hard to call Apple enterprise. They're enterprise. I know. No, I, I, I'm just saying the brands, but. Yeah. You wanted to say Microsoft. No. <laughs> I mean Microsoft, yeah, but if Microsoft does buy Salesforce, that's it. Yeah. Uh, you're saying that's what we're all waiting for here. You're saying who do you want to be? I'm announcing it today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was announced on the news. I know. Anyone anyone like have this New guy? Relic? New Relic? That's a good answer. New Relic has some great marketing. Intercom? Intercom has some solid is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, Intercom has some solid marketing. Um, but New Relic's a really, really good answer. Anyone else? Tableau. Tableau? Yeah. You like their marketing? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you for breaking it. What's yours, Rock? What? What's the answer? My, there's no answer. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is personal opinion only. Um, so what's yours then? Who do we, so we aspire to be the best. We're gonna. That's what we're, our target is, right? Being the being the best enterprise software brand. I mean, that's coming from the mark, you know, uh, product marketing person. Um, but I do actually New Relic. He they, that's a softball because he works at Radius, so he threw that one out to me. I do love New Relic. Uh, I think they do really great Sick. marketing. Thanks. Um, <laughs> really good branding. Um, Salesforce is a good one, and uh, let's see. I don't know. New, New Relic's a hard one to beat, honestly. They do some good stuff. And it's a really boring product. So, <laughs> anyone use New Relic? No? Okay. Um, so, before I get started, um, I want to introduce myself. So, John Hurley, run product marketing over at Radius. Um, I've been at Radius for about two and a half years now. Um, and I want to get to know you guys a little bit more. So, uh, just by like show of hands, I want to understand a little bit more about the roles in the room, so we can figure out you know what people care about in here. Um, so who here is a marketer? 
Cool. Several marketers. Who is a developer? Who's a recruiter? A few recruiters. Cool. Um, who's in sales? A few sales folks. Cool. Who's a founder or owner, owner of their business? Awesome. Some entrepreneurs. Cool. So we kind of have a gamut. All right. Um, so today uh, we're going to talk a little bit about um, some analytical uh, problems that we try to solve and that are near and dear to our hearts um, and we think are pretty unique um, in specifically in the marketing um, and sales space. So for a little bit of context, we'll kind of arrive at, at what Radius is and do, do a demo for everybody. Um, but uh, you know, we're really looking at, uh, at the B2B space, sales and marketing in the B2B space, um, and trying to really understand what some of the, the problems are for companies that are trying to grow their business, um, their B2B business. Um, how are they really uh, powering their customer acquisition? How are they, from a strategic um, standpoint, understanding which markets are going to be the most um, uh, have the most impact on their pipelines uh, and, and down to the tactical of what are we going to make our email subject line uh, you know what what data uh, can, can really help us make the right decisions uh, to, to really increase our ROI to increase our response rates uh, and so we, we really try to uh, factor in all these objectives of a sales marketing org um, and then one of the really, uh, really key things for our brand is design. Uh, so uh, sometimes uh, some of the reasons that a lot of these enterprise software companies do not get a great rap is because they don't put, um, put really design as one of their pillars. Um, and design is really one of our pillars. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that and show you the product and, and kind of uh, show off what the product team uh, has been able to do and our design team has been able to do. Um, so please ask questions as we're going through. Um, and, you know, kind of one of the main principles that we, we like to think about, there's a lot of analytical tools out there. There's a lot of, um, a lot of the focus for companies is about reduction. Um, so a lot of analytics is about reducing. Uh, so reducing risk, reducing options, so um, that you arrive at the right decision. Uh, and that's extremely powerful. Um, but we also like to think about analytics in the sense of, of being additive as well. So how can analytics actually help you expand or grow, um, not just reduce your options? Um, so you know, from uh, you know, one of our biggest principles that really when you look at large, uh, large companies or companies that aspire to be large or even ones that are going to market, they're really looking for, um, looking for those uh, new markets that they can expand into. Uh, now the problem is that people really suck at doing it. Um, they, they fail a lot. Um, so uh, this was uh, something from McKinsey uh, that we landed on recently um, and some conversations we've been having with them. And uh, people really fail at market expansion. So, we try to figure out why is that? Like, why do people fail at something that's so fundamental and so crucial uh, for them to grow their business? Uh, and then we'd really try to solve for it. So that's really what, what Radius has been trying to solve for. And um, we look at really two main activities <coughs> that we believe are really broken, um, that are fundamental to marketers expanding. Uh, the first one is customer segmentation. Um, you know, a kind of uh, tried and true, uh, you know, marketing kind of 101 is trying to understand, you know, who buys and who doesn't. Uh, who are our customers, right? Who's our ideal customer profile, um, you know, or profiles? What are the different groups? Um, you know, what's been working? What's been converting those people into, or those companies into clients? Um, you know, who should, who's in our pipeline today? Who should we, that, that is going to convert? Let's, let's prioritize those, right? Um, and then once you have all these, you know, you think you have all these answers, then it's going out into the market and trying to figure out, okay, what, what's the market look like from there? Uh, what, what's our total addressable market? 
uh, within all these, I these customer profiles. Um, this whole process of identifying lookalikes. We hear a lot about lookalikes from um, B2C. Uh, this is something that's been out with B2C for a long time and, and doing lookalike profiling on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, but that's really really the activity, right? Even if you're a sales rep, you close the, like, the perfect client. Let's say they just flew through the pipeline, um, they bought the biggest package, you hang up the phone, they just sign the, sign the proposal and you're like, holy shit, how do I go find more of those, right? You're trying to identify lookalikes. Marketing end is trying to do the same thing, but on a, on a larger like market size um, level. Uh, so, uh, and then really, you know, how do you iterate on these campaigns that start actually penetrating those markets, saturating those markets? Uh, now the problem is like these two things are siloed. So typically the first thing that happens is customer segmentation. The second thing is market segmentation. Now the only time market segmentation happens first uh, is a lot of times where you have, you have a strategic initiative, right? Like whether it's the you know, CXO or the board or some you know, thing that I thought of in the shower, this is like I decided like we're going after this market. Uh, and in that case, then you just do market segmentation uh, you know, right, right away. This creates a lot of problems. Um, now the first thing, that, and each one has unique problems. So the first thing is on the ideal customer profile. So typically, how are, you know, and some people in this room that, that have kind of heard different companies in this space talk about this problem might, might have seen something similar where you know, typically you're doing all this internal segmentation based on the data that you already maintain. You're taking data from Salesforce, from your marketing automation, Maybe you bought data and you have it in spreadsheets. You're trying to merge or munge all that together to arrive at some insight, right? Something, some profile that tells you, oh, we convert really well here. Uh, now, the thing is, most of the data is not in your CRM. It's not things that really you can even buy. And even if you do buy, you're not able to process. Um, there's this whole world of dynamic data out there, whether that's social data, web data, behavioral data, um, searches, anything you can think of uh, that we all have heard a million times is growing and growing and growing. And that's really below. Um, so how do you start factoring in this below the iceberg type beta and to understand who your customers are? And if you don't, what kind of decisions are you going to end up making? So here's a little like exercise uh, for everyone should get the answer right. Uh, we look at a lot of companies that will make decisions off of this data. Um, so you have a restaurant here, you have a restaurant there, you have a mechanic there. This is, you know, maybe you have all of this data in every one of your records across your entire CRM and you've run some reports to figure out how often do we convert these businesses, right? How often do we convert this one versus that one versus that one? Um, and that will help us decide where we're going to go. Also, which ones look are lookalikes, right? In this case, I would say restaurant one and restaurant two are lookalikes. Um, so based off of this, which ones would you target? That's a question for you guys. Which ones would I, if I'm a marketer, I have to invest in, in, try and, in, in trying to invest in more of this segment, which one am I investing in? Is it a segment or a target? Uh, it's a segment, so all like let's yeah you know, all restaurants that are San Francisco won the forty nine employees under two point five million in revenue. Which which ones am I gonna invest in? Isn't that the same as the middle one? Yep. So you would invest in this one, same amount in this one and this one, right? I don't know data. Right. <laughs> exactly. So. Uh, this is really what we see most of the time, uh, especially if you're thinking about holistically over all of our records. This is, you know, we maintain that traditional firmographic data. And I'm going you know, to invest in the restaurants over the mechanic, and I'm going to put equal investment um, into these restaurants. But when you look below that iceberg, <coughs> you look at some of those web and social type signals. Facebook pages, do they have websites? Are they advertising online? Are they spending money? 
Um, do they have online ordering? You know, relative to my business, actually restaurant one converts at a much higher rate than restaurant two. And actually mechanics convert higher than restaurant one. So on my old decision, I would have invested in restaurant one, restaurant two, same amount, and I probably wouldn't have invested in mechanics. You look below that iceberg, and now you're making a more informed decision. You make a inform more informed decision based on that additional data and that historical success that you've had. Uh, that seems like a very simple analysis, uh, but I can't tell you how difficult, uh, that's how we build a business on, try on fixing that simple analysis. Uh, is this resonating? Any questions at this point? So the, the other thing that gets pretty interesting here is when you build these segments, typically a lot of companies will do vertical segments, right? We target businesses and these two, this is a, a vertical of, of restaurants. This is a vertical of, you know, 200 or below 200 or 2.5 million in revenue. Actually, there's arguments and we see a lot of customers that will actually group these two together and this is in a different segment because we're targeting the social savvy businesses, the businesses that are a little bit more progressive, the businesses that are actively investing in the growth of their company, because maybe we offer a, um, an advertising product, maybe we offer a recruiting product, um, and we want businesses who aren't just lifestyle businesses, who actually care about their business and are growing, and will be more susceptible to what we have to offer them. So the next decision you have to make is again which segment is best so now we've just decided okay restaurant one is worth more money right they've converted at a higher rate let's just say we know our baseline conversion rate um, and restaurant one is converting at 7x so um, and then let's say mechanic is converting at 5x I should probably just change these like restaurant and mechanic shouldn't I instead of completely changing it um, so now I have to make another decision. Okay, again, where am I going to invest? Based on, if you, if you did all that analysis in the previous uh, example, you arrive at that, which is more than most people can do. Um, a lot of times people will use a predictive analytics tool or predictive lead scoring tool to arrive at that answer. Now what's your decision? Like, which one are you going to invest in? Based on that, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm it's guessing not you guys, it's not. I, you can tell I'm leading you on, yeah. right? <laughs> um, this is a cheap trick. Um, exactly. So, and again, this is where a lot of companies will use uh, use either you know, a lot of internal resources to get to this answer. They'll use predictive analytics to get to this answer. Um, and a lot of times we'll reshape a lot of their resources and a lot of their priorities to say, okay, stop, you know, hold the phones. We're going after segment A. Uh, segment A is our ideal customer profile. But based on the next decision on the, the part that's siloed, the market segmentation, which actually holds the most revenue potential for you? And that's when you need to actually look at that market segmentation in line with the customer segmentation. Look at those simultaneously to decide, okay, in segment A, we've had about, we've penetrated about 10% of that market. We know about another 10%, but if you're talking consumer, or you're talking SMB market, there's only about a thousand more in the total market, the total addressable market available for us. How long is that going to satisfy a sales pipeline? How, you know, from our conversions, how much p potential revenue is within that market? Uh, that, that's not very much. If I, if I know my sales team blows through a thousand leads a day, that's not going to do you much. Um, now, it still might convert at a high rate, but the long-term revenue potential there is not very great. So let's look at segment B. Segment B, we have a similar number of customers, right? We have about 100 customers there, but the actual total addressable market, the total market that we can go after is about 10 times the size. Uh, so now as a marketer, if I'm looking at these, trying to make a decision on where to invest, I've now said, okay, I have two great segments from a conversion standpoint here, but I'm gonna go ahead and invest way more of my time 
in this 5x one because even if it converts at a lower rate, I'm going to be I'm going to have a lot more revenue generated from that segment. I'm going to have a lot more marketing driven revenue. And you know, for for those that you know aren't necessarily uh, immersed in the the marketing world and the marketing pressures, marketers are not you know it's not Mad Men anymore. It's it's Math Men. It's kind of the thing that's people will keep talking about. Um, you know, they are hold account held accountable. They have to provide analytics to prove that they are driving revenue. They have to prove to the CXO that. I know where our markets are going to be and where we're going to be driving revenue as a marketing team. We're going to rally around these top places to drive revenue and prove that, prove out their decisions. So these types of analytical decisions are way more important for companies now. Um, so here's just a quick example um, of you know, a, a company that we worked with who actually did a lot of the hard work to get at that first answer uh, themselves. So uh, this is a software company uh, in the payments, their payments slash software. Um, and they're a little bit more sophisticated than the average company, honestly. They um, had a few data analysts um, that were, and a few, um, uh, a few data scientists that were actually buying a lot of data. They were crawling a lot of sources on the, on the web, uh, connecting all of that into their CRM, appending all their records, then running reports in Salesforce, running reports in marketing and automation, doing stuff in Excel. And they figured out that, oh my God, we convert at a way higher rate with companies that have a Foursquare profile, um, among, other, among other signals. Like that was one of their KPIs. I just remember they said, kept on saying, KPI, Foursquare. They have to be on Foursquare. We're like, are you sure they need to be on Foursquare? And are you sure that that's that big of a market? Um, like you've already added a bunch of different signals. Like that might get that well might start running dry pretty quickly. And you have three people on this job, uh, expensive people. Uh, they're in the Bay Area. I know. Let's see. Average. Their average senior data analyst is 97k. They have three like young data analysts on them. That's a lot of money um, to try to figure out this answer. And from a marketing perspective, actually then turning around saying, hey, we need to run a campaign next week. Can you get your three data analysts on that? Like, they come back a month and a half later, right? And say, here's, here's your set, here's your market. Uh, well, you know, this is where we'll start <coughs> talking a little bit about Radius and get into the demo. We were able to connect to, uh, to their CRM and, uh, and pretty, me pretty much immediately see, actually, on Twitter is a much larger KP, uh, KPI for you, uh, one of those uh, signals that really predicts success for you, and the market's about 3x. Uh, so they were able to take those those analysts, move them to, to uh, a little bit more fruitful uh, jobs than doing a lot of the data you know, janitorial work, um, and really be able to identify markets that are a lot larger and converting at a higher rate. Uh, so you know that's really what we do. That, those are the two problems that we look to solve: um, is customer segmentation, market segmentation, helping you figure out who are your ideal buyer profiles and how large are your markets. Really discovering those markets, t uh, targeting who's going to have a high propensity to convert, whether they're in your CRM or not. These are actually businesses that are in the customer CRM already. Um, these are net new businesses. So Radius actually maintains uh, um, an external data cloud of every business in the US, hundreds of signals that we update on a weekly basis. We essentially rebuild a, an entire economic graph of the US every week, uh, over 50 billion uh, data points. And when we connect to your CRM, we'll run this analysis uh, to identify where you've uh, had the most success, what signals predict success, how large are your top markets, um, and then tell you what all those signals are so you can apply that insight to actually run more targeted campaigns, um, increase those you know, conversion rates from uh, better messaging, better positioning, so that you can actually take that 5x segment and get it to 7x, get it to 10x, because you have higher conversions from your campaigns. Uh, classic marketing problem, right? Right person or right company, uh, right message, right time, right channel. Um, and tying that all into things like Salesforce, into marketing automation, 
so you can actually go deliver that campaign. You know, we're not worried. There's plenty of companies that will send the email for you. Uh, we're worried about making sure you have the right data and decisions to, to um, actually uh, launch that campaign. How much time do I have? About 10 minutes. Okay. So, um, any questions from there? I'm going to skip that so we can actually show you the product. Um, just a little bit about, uh, about the company. <clears throat> we were founded in 2009. I have to update that slide. I think we just hit 100 this week. Um, and uh, I've been fortunate enough to raise about 82 million in funding um, and converting really a lot of, uh, uh, of companies ranging from uh, Fortune 100 down to the startups. Um, so, you know, it's not just about, a lot of companies don't have a lot of historical data to work with. Um, and that's a lot, a lot of times one of the first questions is, how do you predict success if we're just going to market? Um, so, uh, you know, we really allow them to, to really slice and dice and define um, a really specific hypothesis based on what they know about their product today. Um, and we maintain a real-time connection to Salesforce so you can actually start testing markets and figure out where you're having traction uh, and then further invest from there. Uh, so a lot of examples of companies that are small, going to market, bringing a new product to market, don't really have that historical success. Um, and then companies that do have a lot of, uh, of historical success <coughs> and uh, we're able to help them really uh, figure out how to discover, target, and acquire those, those customers. So um, I'm going to just jump into the product. You don't need to see all this. Um, you know, just before I do that, a few of the use cases you've kind of already seen, understanding your customers, to um, understanding the market, identifying those lookalikes. Again, not just new businesses, but businesses that are already in your CRM, um, already in market automation, um, and getting those prioritized, whether that's for sales reps or for high touch nurturing campaigns. Um, you know, kind of converting this intelligence or these analytics into actual personalization based on what you know about the business. It's not just a segment that converts to 5X. They actually have a lot of commonalities. They have you know, these features or these attributes that we can start factoring into the message that we craft for them. Uh, we have companies that will um, <laughs> they'll uh, do segmentation, find a market, write a blog post about that market, then send them an email with that blog post, and that's what they use to start engaging with them. That's a smarter way of marketing um, and applying really all those below uh, the surface type signals to, to better, better performance. Um, then actually measuring the performance, we also have a sales tool that will provide some of these insights right within Salesforce. Um, and then making sure all of your, your campaigns are powered by what we believe is the most comprehensive data source on, uh, on U.S. businesses. So, John, can we get into the demo. product, please? Yes, sir. <laughs> all right. So, let's see. There we go. Um, so really the, the main workflow that our customers take is, um, is going through, once they've connected to their CRM, uh, we analyze uh, all their historical performance and we'll actually connect uh, their customer data to uh, their customer records to our records. So again, it's kind of connecting that uh, above the iceberg uh, data to our entire iceberg. Um, now, that is what powers all the analytics within the platform. So you're, not, you're no longer doing analysis just on what's maintained internally, but uh, what is maintained um, in our external data cloud. Uh, so once you've actually connected, and that happens extremely fast, uh, the process is going through and discovering those uh, top markets, um, really targeting those uh, prospects that beat your benchmarks, and then actually deploying a campaign and measuring the results. So I'll hop over here into our Insights dashboard. And Insights is really where those companies that have, um, have historical performance uh, find a lot of value. Um, so quickly you can see, I'll zoom out a little bit. Quickly you can see that we've connected to this, uh, this you know, mimicked customer demo account. And We've analyzed about 27, 28,000 records. So this might be like a, a point of sale company that we work with. 
Um, and from there we've broken down, you know, what is your definition of loss? What's your definition of one? And that can vary from, you know, who are your top customers spending the most money all the way down to, you know, who's just a qualified lead. Um, depending if you really need to drive more pipeline, then it might be lower in the funnel, it might be higher in the funnel if you're looking for people that are going to be big spenders. Uh, then we're going to look at that open pipeline. People are currently in your pipeline that you can go after. And then we have that um, entire addressable market within the US available. Um, based off that one loss analysis, we create a success rate. So that's really your benchmark. That's your baseline that you're looking to beat. And uh, from there, you can start to see all the signals that we maintain um, and the total addressable market and your penetration within those markets um, uh, across every different signal. So again, this is from the firmographic information, the traditional information, uh, like cities, you know, categories into SIC and, and NAICS codes, um, all the way down into some of those more web and social signals. So something like, is the business on Twitter? Um, do they have a website? Um, you know, are they advertising online? Um, how many businesses are there? How many have we converted? How many are currently in our pipeline? And really what you can do from here is start overlaying those signals to create those top performing markets. So going ahead and selecting and applying uh, and seeing those analytics updating in real time. What I'm going to do from here is just since we are limited on time, go to a segment that I've already created. Uh, you know, additionally, you can go through uh, and actually build a segment if you have, you want to understand where is, how large is a certain market, you can actually apply hundreds of different signals, um, and as you apply, select and apply those, you're going to see your penetration rate in real time. Um, but again, I want to show a, a segment that I've already created. So say I'm a marketer, I've, uh, I know that we've like won some customers in Chicago. We ran a, I don't know, direct mail or cold calling campaign or, or something, a social advertising campaign in that market. I want to know exactly you know, how many I've converted, um, who's converting at a higher rate, how large is the market. So I go in, I've created this Chicago spas, and maybe I saw, okay, I'm, I'm converting at a little bit higher rate for businesses that are on Facebook, you know, across my entire, uh, entire database. Um, so I can go ahead and create an unlimited number of segments with Radius, see my penetration. As businesses are closed or won, we maintain that constant connection. So. If I deploy new ones, they'll go in the open. If I win one, they'll go over to the, um, the one column. But really, one of the big keys is like, again, you can provide all these, all the analytics and all the decisions in the world, but how do you start actually taking action um, and driving new demand, driving acquisition? Um, we've uh, built this really seamless uh, deployment profile that connects into Salesforce um, and marketing automation to take action on new records. So start driving new demand, uh, creating you know, custom lead sources, adding lead owners, um, adding Salesforce campaigns, um, or again, taking action on some of those open records. So if I've said that you know, this market has converted at a really high rate for me based on those analytics, I'm gonna go ahead and take these 18 records and make sure our sales reps get in touch with them tomorrow. Uh, make sure they prioritize their time on those open records. Or I'm introducing a new product, let's give those, those one records a call. Or send them an email and put in the subject line, uh, you know, you have 2,000 likes on Facebook um, and our product's going to get you the 4,000. Uh, so really adding that intelligence based on your product uh, to, to better convert those prospects. Uh, and, and lastly, really back within the segments dashboard, is really where you're going to be able to manage, organize all your segments um, and, uh, and in real time understand where you're having traction, um, how much of that market have you penetrated, how much is left, um, you know, what's, what attributes actually make up these, um, these segments that I'm currently targeting, um, and being really organized and strategic with your customer acquisition. So uh, as you can see, you know, the design is really clean, really fresh, um, and we put a lot of uh, uh, a lot of time into making the product as, as easy to use as possible. Um, a lot of a lot of our clients aren't sophisticated, um, uh, you know, uh, analytics people. So uh, we want to make this as as clean and easy to use as possible. Um, 
and and we really are really focused on we productize everything. So uh, a lot of companies out there is really about you know we're going to custom build something for you, um, you know custom model something for you. There's a lot of really awesome products that are uh, kind of in the oven right now at Radius that will take this to the next level. Um, and we'll be fully productized and, uh, and really excited to bring those out over the next year. Um, one little plug, um, you know, I, I don't know if we can share the presentations, um, but um, we you know, have a bunch of case studies and tomorrow we're actually doing a, a, our first uh, series called the Radius Innovation Series, which we'll be highlighting some of the, the products that we're releasing. So a big unique thing with, with us is that we do release every two weeks. Uh, which for enterprise software company uh, is fairly unique. Uh, so we'll be doing this reoccurring webinar to, to feature a lot of these releases that we're doing. So pretty excited about that. Woo! All right. Cool. Uh, I'll be sticking around. I think we have a little sign-up sheet or something. Uh, happy to talk to people and nerd out about this stuff. So uh, appreciate the time. Any initial questions? I don't know if I have any time for questions, but... Yeah. Very cool. When you deploy to Salesforce, that's pushing like full contact data leads into Salesforce. So. Yeah. So um, for new records, you're going to get um, everything from a contact. Uh, um, you're going to get contact information, business information, like standard standard lead uh, uh, lead fields in Salesforce, uh, addresses, phone numbers, uh, URLs. Um, and you know we do have an additional feature where you can deploy like social and web uh, information as well. Cool. Yep. Um, let's say I had 100 companies that are already our customers, and um, let's say we've already done some segmentation. So maybe we've pulled out like 50 of them that we think are very high value. Sure. Um, or maybe maybe we've segmented on other features like um, whatever their behavior is on our platform. Um, could you utilize those segmentations, whatever, however they might have formed, um, to build a kind of a unique yeah. list? Yeah, it's really funny going back to like the pace of innovation thing. I know our sales guys over there are like shaking their head because they get this question all the time. And last week we re released uh, what we call custom signals. So you can not only segment by what we maintain, but we're also what you maintain. Uh, so that can be really anything. Uh, anything in your Salesforce, whether that's a pick list, or you've added that to a campaign in Salesforce, um, or marketing automation, you can segment by not only our uh, signals, but your signals as well. So in reference to marketing automation, <clears throat> is the data flowing strictly through a Salesforce interface, or do you also connect directly with uh, marketing automation platforms? Yep, great question. Um, so the the native integration is through uh, Salesforce today, um, and so we actually it's interesting. Who anyone like built any integrations for marketing automation or know a lot about them? Decent amount. Um, not as easy as doing that in Salesforce. Um, so uh, it's actually pr fairly limited of what you can you can build directly into something like Marketo. Uh, so actually, the the way that we integrate into Salesforce uh, really provides a lot of functionality into that same bi bi-directional link within uh, any marketing automation. Mm -hmm. Uh, working on uh, native integrations uh, where we see you know there's additional capabilities um, but today a lot of um, most of our customers are utilizing radius analytics and segmentation and applying uh, up, uh, or delivering those campaigns through a marketing automation tool via Salesforce yep. yeah I'm just uh, I'm very interested in um, you know uh, segment customers and um, I just have curious, like, what's the algorithm to segment customer? Uh, what's the algorithm? Yeah. Woo! <laughs> um, I'm just yeah. curious. Yeah, so um, 
I would put you in touch probably first with like our recruiting team because we're hiring if anyone's interested um, and to uh, you know the uh, a lot of the algorithms that we will use for things that will recommend customers for you um, uh, there's a variety of algorithms that um, are part of our kind of I guess secret sauce um, that um, even if I told you what they were, I wouldn't really know. Um, so not my not my space. Uh, we'll be fully uh, transparent with that. So um, happy to you know talk more about that. But yep, cool. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks, everybody.